Hello, 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 hello from San Giovanni Rotondo. Hello from San Giovanni Rotondo. I am Brady White, your host. Welcome. I hope that you will enjoy the episodes I have chosen. So, let us sit back, relax, and enjoy. Well, people, great opportunity today and very exciting here in San Giovanni Rotondo. Uh, there was a celebration in honor of Mother Teresa's visit to San Giovanni Rotondo. And I'd like you to... Uh, meet a special fellow who has been helping and organizing uh, for Mother Teresa and the beatification. Father, Father Brian, please introduce yourself. Well, I am uh, Father Brian, Missionaries of Charity Fathers, originally from Winnipeg, Canada, now living in Tijuana, Mexico, which is where our uh, general is. And uh, uh, since the year 1999, I've served also as the postulator of the cause Canonization of Mother Teresa. Since and 1999. It was when the cause started, yes. And uh, we did the work in preparation for the beatification, which was October the 19th, 2003. And since then, we've been uh, waiting, hoping for a miracle uh, that would lead to the canonization of Mother Teresa. Uh, she has a great deal of um, followers, um, many devotees of Mother Teresa. Her life. Can you, in a capsule, just the beautiful words you spoke today at the Mass, uh, could you just make a small uh, sure. portion of that? Okay. Well, uh, I think the, the key to, uh, to getting uh, at really the heart of Mother Teresa is exactly her heart, which is to say, you know, one phrase description is that Mother Teresa was a woman passionately in love with Jesus. And that's the key to understand all the rest. Uh, and. Uh, but it, very importantly, and especially in the context of here in San Giovanni Rotondo, uh, you know, uh, that she always called herself the spouse of Jesus crucified. And so the important part of uh, living that union with Jesus was uh, living the mystery of the cross. And as we discovered only after uh, she died, uh, not only did she have the suffering that would come to, would you might expect to be uh, with Mother Teresa being the founders and traveling and all the different challenges of, of the work. Uh, we also discover uh, that she was so united to Jesus uh, that uh, he was able to share with her uh, his most, uh, or his deepest suffering, that interior suffering, the loneliness, the sense of abandonment that Jesus experienced in the garden and then uh, on the cross and heroically because you would never guess from the joy and the smile, uh, the heroic faith, the pure faith, uh, with which she lived paradoxically so united to Jesus that she didn't experience that union with Jesus. Oh, Father, uh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, and we are in San Giovanni Rotondo. Mother Teresa had devotion to Padre Pio. She did, she was here. That's where the occasion uh, today is exactly today, uh, September the 13th, is the 25th anniversary to the day of her visit to uh, San Giovanni Rotondo, same year, a uh, different month, same year as uh, Pope John Paul II. And uh, of course there's um, pictures of her at the tomb of Padre Pio praying. And uh, as the, with, John, uh, with uh, Pope John Paul II, uh, you know, among the saints there's a kind of a fraternity, a common spirit, and uh, kind of they just, uh, you know, on the same wavelength, so they make these connections. And uh, we see that, which we can say perhaps you know, the three uh, great saints, among at least, if not the greatest saints of the last century, uh, are here. Uh, uh, Father, um, uh, Padre Pio, Mother Teresa, and of course uh, Padre Pio, uh, all were in love with Christ and with our Blessed Mother. The three of them are so very strong. I always feel there's no coincidence with Padre Pio, and I'm sure now that there's no coincidence with um, Mother Teresa and John Paul. And John Paul and Mother Teresa were close. They had a great bond. They had a great bond, both human. It was very nice to just to see the pictures 
of that warmth and affection and Pope John Paul kissing her on the head because he was taller and she was shorter and the Lord Jesus kind of ducking and and uh, but you know beyond that human affection or the human there was because of the being on that same spiritual wavelength or as uh, uh, you know, George Weigel said in his biography of John Paul II is that in many ways uh, Mother Teresa put into practice or made evident for the world and the church many of the teachings of John Paul II and uh, for example the dignity of, a, uh, of every human being the pro-life message all those things are in many ways uh, Mother Teresa lived in a very evident way many of the main teachings of John Paul II with John Paul and also with Mother Teresa like you knew just happened to touch on that where today in today's world abortion is running rampant the whole system of marriage is running rampant uh, but the young people loved Mother Teresa they loved John Paul and even if they did not agree in this crazy world that we live on they want um, a, a mother a father someone who does speak the truth uh, they want a parent who will correct them and discipline them. Many times in life, now a special, where the mother and father, they're, they're busy with their own lives, the children are left uh, for television to do whatever they want to do. And so to see, I think for young people and for the world today, great examples of today's saints is Mother Teresa and is uh, Padre Pio and uh, uh, also John Paul. Before we close, uh, Father Peter, did you have the opportunity to ever see Mother Teresa? Uh, yeah, I've, I knew Mother Teresa personally for 20 years, from 1977 until her death in 1997. So yeah, I was able to see firsthand uh, the things that, uh, you know, just to pick up on what you were saying about youth, you know, I think like John Paul II, Mother Teresa, other saints, Mother Pio, uh, youth, uh, especially adolescent or young adults, they want to see authenticity. They want to see someone who really, uh, we might say in our language, you know, walks the talk. And uh, so you, as you say, whether they agree on everything or are able to live everything, and that might be more challenging, uh, but uh, youth know when someone's real, when someone's authentic and uh, they say they, they live and they're not afraid to say the truth, they're not afraid to say, and that's you know, both in their talk, you know, for example, you know, Mother Teresa went to receive a doctorate in Harvard and, uh, and what did she sp speak about? Purity. Now you might have said, Mother Teresa is going to speak well, purity at Harvard University, and yet it was so silent you could hear a pin drop because they were all just listening and taking it in. So again, uh, when there's real authenticity and the both John Paul, Mother Teresa radiating at home, this the youth listen. As you said that, Father, I actually have goosebumps because it is the truth. Today, when one speaks the truth and hearing that about Harvard, it just... Uh, they say, what, Pocadolca, the goosebumps in Italian. Okay, and I must say always, many times, and even on, you know, that American television of mine, um, how they make uh, parodies of people at, at um, Saturday Night Live, etc. Um, but Mother Teresa's physical, some would think not a beautiful physical body, but it transcended because when you saw her, whether it be live or on television, the beauty radiated from within and was more beautiful than any of these young, beautiful actresses, models, etc. Because that was true inner beauty that God blessed her with. Well, I'm smiling because as you're speaking, I remember that and there was a special celebration in Rome in the audience hall, the the sixth audience hall, year after uh, Mother's death. And one of the persons they had was exactly one of the top models from, if I remember correctly, Argentina. And, uh, and that was actually what she was saying. Her message was 
Uh, exactly, even though Mother Teresa was older and with the wrinkles and all the things, uh, she, the beautiful top model, was saying exactly what Mother Teresa is beautiful. And exactly this interior beauty that radiated from the inside out. Uh, now, there's nothing wrong with physical beauty, God created that too. But that, uh, the important thing is that interior radiance that even would make a, a beautiful face or a beautiful body even more beautiful. So, but anyway, the point was that this beautiful top model was recognizing the beauty of Mother Teresa. Okay, in closing, Father, um, if someone has um, asked for Mother Teresa's intercession and there has been uh, a cure or that they feel that Mother Teresa has interceded on their behalf, what does one do? Okay, very good. Uh, so, uh, you know, to have a, a miracle, okay, you can ask the intercession or you pray to Jesus, to Mary, anytime, all the time. And then, if for the sake of the miracle, only to Mother Teresa. Okay? And if someone does report a favor or even something that could be really miraculous, that has no uh, human or medical explanation, then please contact us at the postulation office. You can go uh, to uh, uh, the internet Mother Teresa dot org is our website very simple mother teresa dot teresa no h please no 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 h. no 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 mother teresa no h mother teresa dot org and uh, then they'll, you'll have the address that's easier there's one in rome calcutta and uh, the mailbox is in san diego even though i live in tijuana so please don't be shy even favors you know, just to write them in make a little effort and then we'll take it from there well, God bless you and your mission in life. And uh, Father, in closing, would you just give a benediction, uh, sure. please? In the session of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, our Mother, Blessed Teresa of Calcutta, may the Lord bless each one of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pace bene, Padre, and Pace thank bene. you for talking with us. Well, Father Peter, thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Let us not forget our brothers and sisters during this time. Let us pray now the prayer that Padre Pio loved so very much, the Hail Mary. Let us remember as we offer this Hail Mary for all of you who are watching, hello from San Giovanni Rotundo, for those you are thinking of, for those that are close in your heart, for those who are alone and have no one to remember them, for those who are involved in disasters and war throughout the world, for the unborn, for peace in this world, for the Holy Father, for his intentions, for all the priests and clergy, religious and missionaries, that they may have the strength to continue God's work. For all our family, our friends, and our enemies, for all those who are suffering in the homes, the hospitals, and the jails, for all those who have died, our loved ones, for all the souls in purgatory, that they may rest in peace. For all your intentions, please join me in the Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Our Lady of Grace, pray for us. St. Pio, pray for us. Now remember, you can email us at PadrePioInfo at AOL.com. Again, PadrePioInfo at AOL.com. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs>